Hi, uh, welcome to this uh, lecture series of CSE 340 Computer Architecture. Uh, we'll be starting with chapter one, which is computer abstraction and technology. This is the first chapter that we are going to uh, study from our textbook. We all know what are the uh, what are the textbooks that we are going to use, and uh, this is the this is the textbook which is computer organization and design. This is our main textbook, and all other books are kind of supporting books. We will refer to them when uh, we uh, require them. But our main textbook is computer organ organization and design hardware software interface. Now let's see what we have here. So computer revolution. So what 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 this slide means? What, what this slide actually tells? Uh, this slide tells progress in computer technology. How com computer technology progressed over the year? So this is what uh, this slide is going to discuss. Uh, obviously very briefly so as you can see that uh, here one important uh, thing is mentioned and that is Moore's law Moore's law now what is Moore's law Moore's law uh, is given by Gordon Moore in 1965 Moore predicted that uh, the number of transistors in a single die would get double in every 18 months to 2 years which means if you have 100 transistor in an area or a die now then after 18 months to 2 years the number of transistor that you can accommodate on that on the same area would be 200 this is what Moore predicted and this is called Moore's law and transistor technology actually evolved based on the Moore's law. So what uh, this technology change uh, allows us or allowed us now makes novel application feasible. So what, what this means that because of Moore's law or advancement in Moore's law now we can think of more advanced uh, operations for example computers in automobiles we all know that in automobiles we have we have built in computers and lots of uh, components are controlled lots of things are controlled by comp uh, computers in built computers also nowadays we see driverless car driverless car are nothing but there are built-in computers who actually uh, executes codes one after another, instructions one after another. It sees uh, what is in front of it and it takes decision. It's a high-performance computer that is inside the uh, that that works uh, that or uh, that that decides or that takes decision like a driver. This is this is what a, a computer in automobile does. And then uh, comes <coughs> uh, cell phones. We all know what cell phones can do, or we are so much dependent on cell phones nowadays. If you consider the cell phone that we use now to the cell phone that uh, that we used to use, um, let's say around 15 years back, they are much bigger, much heavier, but the functionalities were not as much as you have into today's cell phone. I can I can give you an example that the that the cell phone that I am using right now probably thousand times or even more times faster than my first uh, desktop PC. So this is a revolution that transistor bought in the cell phone uh, market or cell phone domain. Then human genome project again. If, uh, if you know about this this part uh, the, the, uh, this uh, project or uh, this domain then you would know how much power we would need to uh, do uh, work on human genome project transistor technology or uh, improvement in transistor technology advancement in transistor technology allowed us to do this research worldwide web we all know what is worldwide web what uh, what uh, like benefit we are getting from World Wide Web. 
it requires heavy servers all these are because we have high performance chips which means we have high performance uh, uh, chips uh, which uh, has lots and lots of, uh, of, uh, of transistors inside and this is possible because of Moore's law. Moore's has, Moore has predicted that the transistor number of transistor would get double uh, after 18 months or two years and then we have search engines. So we all know what search engine can do. We all know about Google search engine. If you write something in the textbook, you would get a result and more than uh, more, more often than not, you would get the right result. So these are all uh, these all requires high performance computers and high performance computers are possible because advancement in the transistor technologies. Lastly, what it says that Computers are uh, like pervasive, which means we use computer in our day-to-day -day computer or computer-powered devices in our day-to-day -day activities. This is what means by computers are pervasive. Let's say we, uh, let's see what we have in the next slide. So in the next slide. We all know about this, uh, basically. The, um, it says classes of computer. Very briefly, we have three types of computers. One is desktop computer. The other one is server computers. And then probably new for some of you are embedded computers. So desktop computers. What is desktop computer? General purpose computer. Desktop computers are uh, normally referred to as the general purpose computer. Uh, you will have variety of softwares installed uh, there uh, for your uh, different purposes. It's not, uh, uh, it, it, it could be like what processor, one software for what processor, probably one software for uh, a, your a, a video editing, one software for, uh, for your playing games and you just name it. This computer varies based on the required performance as well as the amount of money you can spend on that. So you just need to make a trade-off. When we go to buy a desktop or in that case if I can say laptop, uh, we sometimes aim for really really high uh, desktop or laptop but sometimes our budget doesn't support that high performance or uh, uh, the uh, desktop or laptop, laptop that you want to buy so what we do we make a trade-off we uh, just by uh, reducing some of our requirement and maybe just increasing the budget a bit we just make a compromise now coming to the server computers what is server computers server computers are as you can uh, as most of us know server computers are networks uh, and network based computers so we normally do not use server computer as we use desktop computers as we all know desktop computers we, we have them in in our home and we do our day-to-day -day activities and we, we uh, these are uh, more of a general purpose computer uh, but server computers they are uh, like they, they are set up for some specific uh, purposes for example web server i'm sure that you all have heard about web server so <coughs> web servers their main purpose is to host the uh, website and request the uh, and and serve the request coming from that uh, for that website you have a mail server as the name suggests its main purpose is to uh, handle the emails coming uh, to your organization or going from your organization to uh, various other individuals or other organization so they are of high capacity performance and reliability this is really important as you as you can see in, uh, from the uh, first point that it is 
it is net, uh, ne a network uh, ne a, this is network base as you can see here this network base which means when it is network base that means this is open to the world so what it 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 opens up a challenge also since this is open to the world anyone can uh, can uh, like log in or uh, can break into your server you do not want to uh, uh, you do not want uh, anyone to uh, get access to your server so reliability or security is a concern when you are dealing with network server uh, ranges from high uh, from small server to building size what this means is small server let's say a server uh, which is not that big uh, probably bigger than the desktop computers at the same time you'll have really really, really big size uh, servers which are designed to perform really really gigantic uh, operations or gigantic perform gigantic tasks now we have embedded computers so embedded computers probably uh, uh, new to some of you so what is embedded computers embedded computers are hidden as components of system and then strengthen the power performance and cost but more uh, simply what is embedded computer embedded computers are something like a, a let's assume that you have a chip in that chip you have all the functionalities inbuilt now if you have a system like that or a chip like that that chip is designed to perform particular uh, uh, job not a general purpose uh, system or general purpose uh, chip for example let's assume the microwave oven that you have in your house or your smart ac or or uh, your washing machine those are all embedded systems they are there are chips inbuilt chips and those chips are designed to perform some specific task it cannot work like a desktop computer even though you were, were saying that this is embedded computers okay so let's see what we have next now look at the processor markets uh, where uh, the market stands based on the uh, processor that uh, different different devices uses now first of all uh, let's start with cell phone let me tell you the data that you are uh, we, we have uh, here are till 2012 2013 but the scenario is almost same uh, for example cell phones if you consider cell phone you can see from the uh, from the graph that the cell phone processor uh, market is dying is coming down which means that this is, this is uh, by the way is uh, what we call feature phones most of the uh, most of the uh, phones that you see uh, are smartphones so the feature phone markets are kind of coming down or dying and then as you can see here this smartphone market this this is due to the fact that the prices of smartphone has uh, come down dramatically now you can have uh, a, a smartphone with like only few thousand uh, taka which wasn't uh, the case uh, let's say five years back or, uh, or around that time a smartphone was really expensive but yes there are some really expensive brands but still uh, you can buy a smartphone only by spending only a little bit of money and then uh, we have pc as you can see a, 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 the pc market is kind of flat it's going flat and it will remain flat also remember that this does not include the tablet and this is the tablet market which is kind of tab and this market is also gaining okay so this is this is kind of processor uh, market you can see the detail of this diagram as you can see it's a uh, figure 1.2 in our textbook so you can see detailed diagram there detailed explanation of this diagram there 